Welcome to Lex's world everybody. So a few months back I asked the channel community in the community tab a question about which issue they faced most and the results really weren't what I expected. Bugs won by a huge margin as you guys can see. There's more of you concerned with insects than I thought. Um, as a primarily indoor Canadian grower, I simply don't deal with bugs a whole lot from cycle to cycle, other than when somebody emails me with a bug problem. But I was reminded after getting these results back that, man, bugs are a big category in most other places further south, and I've only ever talked about aphids, and quite briefly. So today, let's start a three or four episode series on some of the most most common pest groups, starting with thrips, one of the most common pests in cannabis growing, especially greenhouses, and how to identify, prevent, and kill them. So visually, thrips look like this. They are tiny, like one to one and a half millimeters, almost as small as aphids, and they multiply fast since they lay eggs monthly. They go through several different phases of growth, and depending on where you live and the exact subspecies of thrips you've got, the adults might have wings or no wings, and they might be dark or they might be brown. The most common species of thrips that go after cannabis are the small, yellow, yellowish, whitish type, like this. Only in the larvae stage do they look pretty consistent from species to species. You'll find them on the oldest, lower leaves first, and usually underneath the leaf in greater numbers. What gives thrips away, though, is not their visual appearance or spotting them with the naked eye, but what they do to the leaves. Sickly, small white spots appear. There's very few at first, which is the stage that you should identify and solve the problem, but if left unaddressed, soon entire fan leaves will be overtaken by them. These fan leaves will become half white and somewhat silvery with all these little spots, and then the leaves will become brittle, and then they die. And the thrips, well, they migrate to the next nearest leaves and plants. Late stage thrips damage looks kind of like spider mite damage, so you will have to look at the actual bugs carefully just to make sure that they're not spider mites. Thankfully, spider mites look totally different being classified as actual spiders. This is one, and this is late stage spider mite damage. Thrips won't ever make webs like that. However, thrips do infest buds particularly hard, so this is one bug that can't be ignored, especially if it's already present in adult form under the leaves when the plant is young, because that means that they already got babies on the way. You can prevent thrips from occurring in the first place by weeding regularly for outdoor gardens, because thrips form easily on small weeds, or prevent them indoors by keeping a very clean greenhouse, since thrips like dust and dirt. Rotating out your soil between cycles is also a good prevention method, since that's where they lay eggs, as is occasionally spraying the garden with natural insecticides such as potassium soap or neem oil. Yes, yes, I know how some of you feel about neem oil, but I'm still recommending it as an option. You can also use sticky traps to spot the thrips and other bugs early before they become a big problem and slow them down. Now, if you hate insecticides and the thrips aren't too far along, you can even introduce bugs that are harmless to cannabis but predatory to thrips, such as Amblyssius swirsky, a predatory mite that can attack thrips and other undesirable insects, such as spider mites. People actually sell predatory mites commercially for greenhouse use. I'll try to link to some examples in the video description. Just understand that if you do use an insect, insecticide, it will kill the good bugs along with the bad bugs. And while you're down in the video description, check out today's sponsor, TNB Naturals, who make various gardening products like pH adjusters. Now, if your thrips are far along and your plants are in the vegetative phase, then you're past the light prevention methods. You have to actually get fighting aggressively. First, you're going to want to cut off and remove all the affected fan leaves and manually crush and destroy any big herds of thrips that you can spot underneath leaves. This will mostly just get rid of adults, but it will greatly slow down your infestation. 
Next, separate the affected plants from the rest if you can, and heavily mist spray them with water, which makes it hard for the thrips to move around and reproduce. Finally, you can attack them with insecticides and sprays, focusing those sprays on the growing medium where the young thrips are being born. Pyrethrins, rotenone, potassium soap, and neem oil are all effective options. Repeat the spraying every second day for two weeks and you should be all good. If you're afraid that the thrips could come back or you're running a round-the-clock type garden that never stops for a cleanup, then you may want to then introduce predatory species of bugs to be 100% sure that the job is done forever. And there you go, guys. That's thrips from A to Z. But I know what my regular subscribers are thinking, and maybe some of the non-regulars. You're thinking, Lex, this is all good stuff, but why the hell is your beard green? Well, I'm glad you noticed. Um, it's green because my 420 club members have reached another Just For Fun goal, and I promised that I'd color my beard in an episode for this one. So here it is. Special thanks to Neil from Chicago for pushing us over the top for that random goal. So check out the club in the video description as well if you're interested in that. All club members get reliable access to yours truly whenever they need help. But otherwise, if you're new to the channel, I'd settle for you just hitting that subscribe button and the like button and seeing you here next time.